Hey everybody, it's I, your Survivor buddy Gordon Holmes here with the nerdiest thing you're going to do all week. I'm talking about the Survivor 46 Power Rankings. Welcome, nerds. Uh, first off, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, today's member of the Reba 4, minus one, plus one, got it right, uh, that alliance. Uh, I am happy as a clam uh, to uh, welcome the Survivor 45 favorite, Drew Basile. Welcome, Drew. Favorite is strong, Gordon, but I'll take it. And I'll, oh, but I'll tell you though. Favorites? In this group, I don't even think I'm the favorite. I think, if anything, I'm the underdog because... Also, ambushing me, we have yeah, Brandon yeah. Dillon. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. This this season isn't just about my redemption. It's about redemption for other people. Uh, Brandon Donlin, thank you so much for joining us. The guy who couldn't be madder at a ladder. So excited to have you here. Uh, <laughs> it, this is your chance to, to yeah. show what you got, to, to finally put that rotten Reba 4 in their place. So thank you so much for being a part of my team, buddy. I am just thrilled to be in a situation where I can beat somebody who wants to be there on Survivor 45 at something. You know what I mean? Like, no, like normally the people, only people I beat are voluntarily leaving the show. Um, So <laughs> Drew's here and if we're ready to go. If, 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 if we're annoying enough, Drew might just be like, bye-bye guys and, and and you'll get your wish. <laughs> Listen, I'll get episode two, baby. It's nice. We've um, never, I'm had, excited. Any, we've never okay. had anybody win by submission. Uh, Maybe this is the week. <laughs> maybe this is the week we make it happen. This is the first thing of Survivor episode three adjacent that I get to be a part of. So I'm very excited to just kind of hang out and, and do our thing. All right. Is that is that all the Brandon jokes? Should we all start? I'll start being nicer to Brandon. There's, there's a reflux thing somewhere, but we can get to that. We, we got it now. We got time. Uh, so let's talk about last week's show. That was like uh, de depression pornography to me because I felt like I watched 90 minutes of a guy just cry his eyeballs out. And and never receive a reprieve. Even when he was like, "I hope I lose the rock draw." He w couldn't win. He couldn't lose for winning, or however that that saying works. So, uh, tell me, uh, you two, how are you feeling about? I really hated last week's episode. It was it was rough to watch poor Banu go through all that. Yeah, it was. It's it's the tough one, you know. After having been on like a losing tribe, just the dynamic of Yanu versus Lulu is so paramountly different. And, like. Lulu, we were having fun the whole time we were losing. Like, I for the five days that I was there, you know, we were chill. We were, it was funny. Like, when we got back from each challenge, we would laugh. We would, you know, riff on whatever. And it just seems, you know, I feel so strongly for for Banu and for Jess and Jelinski to a degree of just, like, having an experience that is not only, like, not the thing that you want when you go to Survivor, but also being on a tribe that just doesn't ever have that camaraderie that, like, you go there for it. Like, I mean, Drew Drew lived it. Like, you you go there finding that group that you want to move to the end with or just even like each other a little bit. And it just doesn't seem like this is the group that when they're putting together their their puzzle pieces when they're making the tribes, is this, you know, oil, water, and, you know, mayonnaise, all the other shit. Like, it's it's not a good concoction what they got going on. Yeah, I, I agree, Brandon. And uh, it's an interesting tribe because on paper, I really think Yana should have been the strongest tribe, right? They've got three strong men. Their women are strong. Um... And they they can't work together at all. Like complete personality clash. I think you also got to account for, you know, Bonnie was so in the pits because it just rained and storms hit hard on Survivor because you have no cover, you're pouring wet, you can't sleep. So you're completely exhausted. I really think that plays into things. Although I got to tell you guys, I found, I don't think I was the only one, I found the episode to be kind of funny. Like there were so many moments. Like when he like, He's like, they called me a fool and Ben in the background, like a video game character. He's like, that does not rock. Like, come <laughs> on. That's pretty good. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys are more empathetic than I was, but I I, I liked it. Well, the, the joke I made is that Ben doesn't understand good and bad. He understands rocks and doesn't rock. <laughs> uh, he, he's a lot very, of he, not rocking in this episode. Yes, he's, he's, he's very again. much the, the Jack Black character uh, from School of Rock. Uh, very much in that sense. Uh, I, I have a question, and I, sorry, Brandon, this one might not be for you. Um, yeah. When a tribe shows up at uh, at a challenge and somebody's missing, uh, how easy is it to read into what exactly happened, or is it more of a guessing game? Does does Probe's questions help you kind of figure out what happened? You know, Probe's, to his credit, consummate professional, he really does not give things away, right? Yeah. I mean, he's been doing it long, maybe at the beginning he did, he's been doing it long enough that he is, like, polished. Um, but I do think that especially in a three tribe format, the tribal dynamics are very formulaic. You either have like the, the weaker, stereotypically weaker people go, um, awkward, whatever. And if that doesn't happen, um, then you can safely assume either there's an alliance of the, the bottom or there's been some kind of upset and you'll hear about it at the journey. Um, so it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that the demographics play into it that way, but then you have to account for the fact that like certain people are way more active on the mat. And it reminds me of your, you know, your home, Brandon, Lulu, where, Emily said one thing and then Sabaya was like, well, actually, uh, you know, Hart does win Survivor. 
So, okay, right there, you can obviously tell what the dynamic is. And, like, Soda snatching the idol away from Venus, rookie maneuver, because it shows that Venus is on the bottom, Soda's pushy, and Ramda's got Venus's back. You've got the whole tribal dynamic in, in 10 seconds. So, real blunders on their part. And so, safe to say that there have been enough clues there that um, they could probably figure out Ramden, you know, or what, what the dynamics are. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they, just the way that they pegged the, the Bond was the person to take. Um, I, and the, the even the island visit, like one person doesn't get to participate in the it, all, just all of it, like just like the whole episode yeah. was just like, like you know, we spend 90 minutes and then just for at the last second, um, you know, bye bye, uh, Randon. Uh, I, I guess another question is one thing I found really interesting it's Ben came back and lied about whether he knew he had a vote or not. I thought that was really interesting so that they couldn't rely on him for a vote, but also they couldn't ostracize him because he might not have one. I thought that was really clever. I thought it rocked. It did rock. The yeah. the only the only downside that I can see there is provided, you know, I believe, and we'll get in obviously to the rankings, that Charlie and Maria are the people that are controlling the Sega tribe when they do inevitably get to a vote. In the event that they both disagree on who to vote for, to go, you know, if they just split gender, we got the men, you know, Ben wants to keep tim or or whoever and you know you know i'm sorry charlie wants to keep ben or tim or maria wants to keep mariah or jem like the the three women there because they know that ben may or may not have a vote they may get into a situation where they can just say you know if you might not have one let's just bank on that maybe doesn't have one maria also has the extra vote you know they could easily split that up maybe not the best decision right before a potential emergency situation but it could happen yeah, and of course, like, there is a question of, like, how secret is Ben's secret, really? I think the half lie is a good maneuver because you really can't tell these big lies anymore on 26 Day Survivor. The expectation is that, like, you're getting something. Um, and the game is so quick that, like, I mean, you, you're going to have to put up pretty quickly. Um, so Ben's one is a nice way of, like, buying a little bit of time without having to make a major commitment um that's gonna damage trust in which he's not gonna have the chance to rebuild later but i would guarantee that charlie knows the truth um and i think that means maria probably also knows the truth so uh so let's get into the the, the what happened last week uh obviously randon goes home uh without any hint of it happening in the trailer so even though i i, I kind of dropped the ball for my team i'm holding on to that i had no way of knowing there was gonna be a medevac so looking at the score uh kelly now bandian uh, had Randon spot 14 while I had him in spot nine. That was actually the biggest disparity. The one we missed, we kind of went back through the numbers. So the current score is uh, the Reba four uh, minus one plus one has 30 and Gordon's all-stars uh, all-star victories of victory uh, 26. It, it, here's the thing. And, and as we get, we're going to go into to how the, 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 the fans and the, the message board did. Nobody nailed it. That's how, that's what a out of the blue thing this was. Everybody kind of expected Banu to get the boot. Uh, so not, like I said, not a single person called this one. And if you, if you did poorly, I'm going to say this in advance because a lot of people did not your fault. Like, like Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Uh, spot 15, uh, ex did extremely well. Uh, Jag 519 and Logan Smith. Well done. Uh, spot 14 tied with Kelly. We had JP 15 as me. In spot 13, we have Cats Rule the World, Chris Hamowin, Nikki 20, Kristen Dicker, Nadia X01, and Ice Kafevi. In spot 12, we have Yuki PT2LM, Charlie Shecker, Sloan Comments Things, Fat Ass the Great, that's a, that's a name, uh, Vincent Mistaeus, uh, JK Morgan, spot 11, B. Lehman, uh, Survivor Drip, Imperfect Star, Am Long 14, Stephen M, Shot in the Dark, and Kevin M, uh, excuse me, Kevin A, spot 10, Rat Gravity, Z and Ramos, Rowan 3213, Cody Braman, Mouse Sparks, and Potato Dog. Love you, potato dog. Uh, spot nine tied with me, Brandon Davies, uh, Ka Ra Su, uh, Survivor Fan Dan, Jason Yao, uh, Carpe Diem, Baby Fox, do to do to do, uh, Nathan Bomber. That's how you know I have kids, is you can't say baby anything without following up with the do to do. Uh, it, it's here's okay. I know people hate stories about people's kids, but my my daughter was a huge Baby Shark fan, and I'll chase her, and she'll be like, run right away, do to do, and it's adorable. Kids. Uh, I might edit that out. Uh, in spot eight, we have uh, Dylan W., J.M. Chap, Andrew Gulia, Kendra McClanahan, Ferret Bandit, Joel M. Gallagher. Spot seven, Eric Swain and Saxophonia 23. Spot six, Huffy 991 and Ghetto Hamster. Spot five, Alan W., Dominic Reisland and Evan Swihart. Spot four, Sean Gohan Canado, 6129 and C. Blazer C. Finally, one person had, the, had, the, had, a, had a really bad week. Um, and it's not your fault. You, how, how can you possibly be held responsible for a metaphor that wasn't teased? Uh, so all the cyber hugs, if you're willing to accept them, socially awkward potato, cyber hug for you, my friend, um, had Randon in spot three. 
It's bad. It, it's it's early. It is early. There's plenty of points left on the board. Uh, so don't don't get down. And if you're new to this and you, you you're worried about jumping into this, feel free to play. Like we you know, we're kind of keeping score based on the honor system. It's it's more for fun than anything. Although there are some bets going on. I don't know if you two know about this. Uh, there are bets going on. If my team loses and it's Franny's fault, we all get to be in Franny's wedding. She's not engaged, but someday when she gets wow. married, we all get to be in her wedding. Very exciting. Uh, and if if my team loses, I will buy the Reba 4 minus one plus one sandwiches because apparently that's what Austin likes. So that that's that, those are the stakes thus far. Pretty intense. I get it. Okay, the rules of the Survivor Power Rankings are as follows. Each week, a member from each team will create a separate Power Ranking list. The ranking of the person who is voted out of the next episode will determine the number of points uh, that player will earn. For example, if Tiffany is voted out of this episode and Drew has her in fourth place and Brandon has her in first place, Drew's team will receive four points and Brandon's team will receive one point. At the end of the season, the team with the most points will be named the Survivor 46 Power Rankings Challenge Champions. Now, very important, rankings are not based on who the player thinks will ultimately win the season. No. The smart strategy is to rank players based on how safe you think they are in the upcoming vote. Brandon, Drew, ready to rock and roll? Let's do it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Drew, who do you have at spot one? All right. Number one, very safe pick. If if I, I'm willing to put some stuff on the line here. If my number one goes home or my number 16, 15 does not go home, <laughs> like – I'll do the next episode naked, okay? Like, I'll, I'll send you guys $1,000 because I am so sure about next episode. Like, everything is telling me that Charlie is safe. Charlie's my number one. Uh, he's a rock-solid middle position. And also, Gordon, Brandon, you guys are bigger fans than me probably. But even I know that at the beginning of the game, you really got to read the edit. And right now, Charlie's edit is jackpot. So, I don't see him going home. Brandon, what, 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 what's your number one? I'm sorry. Before we move on, I'd like to get that uh, that wager locked down. So if your number 15 goes home, uh, sorry, if number 15 doesn't go home, was that what it was? If you're wrong about I, I'm so confident. I, a thousand bucks is too much. I'm, I, I'll buy you guys DoorDash if my number 15 does not go home. Okay. That's what and you'll do the next episode DoorDash. naked. So we'll get DoorDash. At least and... shirtless. Yeah, right. that's <laughs> yeah. my well, we don't, we don't pan out. Yeah, we, and we can even leave the naked thing. Yeah, it's we a, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, no, we definitely need the well, naked yo, It's a family about? show, I'm though. a sex symbol. Yeah. It's, it's, it's assumed nudity or alluded. You guys... It's alluded to. Yeah, implied. Let me All right. guys remember the Top Gun <laughs> montage. You know, I'm just saying. All right. But oh, anyways. Yeah. Cue the music. All right, that, we have it on tape. So, like, that's that's legally binding, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, DoorDash. Yes. All right. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Brandon, number one, please. So I also, you know, my number one, I feel equally as confident. I will not get naked. Reddit doesn't want that. I, my girlfriend probably wouldn't like it. I will just stay clothed. But I will tell you, my number one is Tiffany. Tiffany, you know, she's got an idol. She's rocking with an idol. She has, you know, Q also, I think, kind of in her back pocket. The way that I believe the edit is showing us the Yanu tribe is that Q is in this. I know we hate car analogies, but driver's seat. But Q does need to ask Tiffany if they can, you know, what she thinks about the Kenzie plan. Like Q has this idea that maybe it is smarter to keep Banu. Banu's with me. Banu's going to be loyal to me. Let's get rid of Kenzie. You know, Q has to bring that information to Tiffany. So Tiffany has one more level of knowledge than anybody else on that tribe at this point. You know, she can kind of control where everything goes. You know, granted, the, the, the number 15 is probably going to be a unanimous number 15 at the end of this thing. But if it's not, you know, I believe that person probably is likely going home. If it is going to be a shock vote, it likely will be Kenzie. And I think that will be Hugh and Tiffany leading that charge. So I do have Tiffany number one. I think she's playing great. I'm loving watching her. And, you know, hopefully she doesn't. If, if she goes home, I screwed the team and I'm going to be taken out back and shot. So let's hope not. Number uh, two. I, I'm sorry. I got to harp on this a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, I I was going to win. Um, either, either Bono was going to go home, we were going to tie, or Kenzie was going to go home, and I was going to win. So when Jeff Probst showed up on that beach, I just held my monitor and screamed and cried a little bit <laughs> and then went and checked the numbers and saw how much of a loss it was. I, I, like, I'm going to let this, don't, don't, this is it. I'm going to let this go. But if Kenzie went home, that was a win. That was a win. Like there was no way I was losing unless Tiffany went home, which wasn't happening. So proceed. I'm sorry. No, no. Also, you know, yeah, we, we all, you know, gripping the monitor. It's a lot. You know, I gripped the monitor a couple of times during Survivor 45. Oh, um, just the first two episodes after that. Not so much. Number two. Let me tell you about number two. Number two, I have Hunter, the golden boy, the, the construction, the Home Depot manager, whatever he's doing out there, building stuff, it's great. You know, the Ikea, he's fantastic. He's he's 
in the situation where NAMI would go to tribal council, there's presumably two more rounds of play left before emergency situation. There's no reason that they would take out Hunter, who is their biggest challenge asset. You know, challenge strength is very much important, but it's a little bit less important, I believe, at the fourth and fifth votes. You could make a play to get rid of a strong challenge competitor. Like last season with Sifu, they were going to get rid of Sifu in that fourth vote. You know, getting rid of Hunter here just wouldn't make sense as he is kind of one of the, the pillars of this tribe. You know, Venus had her eye on Hunter, and I think that maybe if Venus stays past the, the, the pre-merge portion of the game, that may factor in later, but right now... She does, he doesn't have the eyes on him. He's got Tevin as well. So I think that Hunter's chilling and building some more stuff for a little bit. All right. Drew, who's yeah. your spot two? My spot two is not Hunter. Um, he's a little bit lower for me. But I have Maria uh, for very similar reasons uh, as I have Charlie's number one, which is they're the pair. They're going to move together. Um, again, somebody who has been glowingly portrayed in the edit. Um, really intelligent, really pragmatic. I just can't see anything happening to her. And so for that reason, you know, she's my obvious number two. I'm sure she's up at the top for you, Brandon. Uh, but I'd be shocked. I really would. Hunter, I'm a little less less confident on, but I, yeah, I agree. I agree he's probably safe. My number three, however, is someone else from that tribe, the Nami tribe. Uh, my number three is Liz. Uh, Liz is an unconventional pick, but I think there's a lot going in her favor because the Nami tribe is arguably like the least predictable tribe dynamic, or at least... You know, Yanu, we know we know the breakdown. We know roughly the two people who it could be. Um, Siga, we we know the who is in the middle. But Nami, there are so many like high personalities, big personalities. They're all not getting along together. They have zero intergroup cohesion, which means they're gonna be a disaster come merge. I mean, I, I see horrible things in their future, but right now I think they'll likely win the challenge. And I think also if they don't win the challenge, those bigger personalities are gonna are gonna hash it out. And Liz, who's a little bit kooky, who's a little bit quieter, is going to be with Hunter as kind of like an under-the-radar number to swing the majority. All right. Brandon, who's your spot three? Love the Liz analysis. I wanted to put Liz. Liz is towards the top of mine. I wanted to put her higher, and I, I echo all of that. I can't wait to talk about Liz. But my number three is Q. I, lo I, I love this guy. I love this guy. This guy is one of my favorite people that I've watched in Survivor in a long, long time. I love his style of play. I love how funny he is. I love the conversation with him and Banu talking about, you know, the Rob to your Philip. And Banu's like, all right, great. You know, that sounds good to me. I think he was playing fantastic. The only reason that I have him ranked lower than Tiffany is just because Tiffany has, I think, a little bit more information. Tiffany also has a very tangible advantage in Survivor, which is, you know, definitely helpful. Um, but I think the Q is there's no scenario where Yano loses again and Let's be honest, probably gonna, right? He will, you know, he will be back at tribal council. There's no scenario where I believe that it's him, but I do believe that like he could be left out of something like that could happen, I assume. Um, but I think that he is mostly safe for this, this version of the, the, you know, it, the version, this cycle. Yeah. I love the, uh, the, was it Bonu was a liability that could become an advantage and Kenzie, I forgot the term he used, but like was never going to be work in his favor. I forgot the term, but it was like a really interesting way to sell that to somebody, to sell that to Tiffany. Like, yeah. you know, Bono can be in our pocket, but Kenzie's always going to be playing. Like, I really, really like that analogy. For sure. And that's like, that's outside of the box thinking that you have somebody like Bono that is at your disposal. And it's like, you know, we could get rid of it. It's like a Caleb with Emily last year is that like we could just get rid of them, but how can we use them? You know, and I, I really like that style of play. And then my fourth pick is, uh, you know, Drew just talked about Maria, but Maria is my number four. I have Maria and Charlie back to back. Spoiler alert, Charlie is my number five. I have Maria again, just because she has that tangible extra vote advantage that if Sega does end up going to a tribal council can come in handy. Granted, I wouldn't use it in a pre-merge vote. I think the pre-merge votes are normally, especially if you haven't been to a tribal council, pretty cut and dry. I assume they'll figure it out before they get there. But in the event that there is something with Charlie and Maria, they don't get along. They can't decide who they're going to vote off. You know, Maria does have something that can be like, hey, Let's let's make the decision easy. I've got something that I'll, I'll use. You know, I wouldn't pull it out, but she could pull it out. And just because she has that thing that she can hold, I would put her above Charlie on my ranking. Yeah, well, I mean, I disagree with that a little bit, Brandon, philosophically, because as you saw again on the Lulu tribe, which I actually think is a really interesting test case for pre-merge dynamics in the new era, like how how these tribes are going to function as they dwindle in numbers or as they you know approach the merge. Uh, I think these advantages are almost more of a liability than an asset in the pre-merge. Uh, people are eager to make a big move. They haven't gone to tribal. They have people they might not get along with super well. 
And getting rid of an advantage, putting it out of play, which means there could be another one for you, is a very compelling reason to uh, take a snipe at somebody. And that that will affect my rankings later on. Um, but for my number four, I have Tiff. Um, again, I really think Tiff is the center of that tribe. Uh, all roads lead to Tiff, or at least all roads with a vote do. Um, Q, Q presents himself. At, I love Q. I even tweeted that, you know, he's my favorite player this season. I love the way he plays. But... I think that sometimes in his confessionals, maybe he's overselling the degree of control he has on the votes, on the decisions. It really boils down to Tiffany making the choices. Um, and the numbers are so tight on that tribe that like, there's no way that Kenzie and Q are going to get together, take her out. I mean, she, she's, she's, she's pretty safe in my book. Uh, my number five, right. The, the snake number five, my number five is Tevin. Um, and I actually think Tevin is in more danger than number five from like a purely, objective view of the game but you have to account for other things like edit like who we hear from and Tevin is the narrator Tevin opens the season I find it really hard to believe that such prominence would be given to him that he would be portrayed as the social center if he was gonna just get sniped out early um and for that reason I think that he's going to be pretty protected if Nami ends up going to tribal so my number five I've got Charlie again. Spoiler alert: I said it in my last round with Maria, but I love Charlie's game. I love to play in the middle. Again, reminds me of Brando and Kelly. You know, long way they reign from season forty-five. They're in a great position, and I do love. You know, Charlie has confessionals where he says, you know, he's always felt a little bit socially awkward, but he's integrating into the tribe beautifully. He does seem like he is. You know, a, 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 with Ben as well, who's a little bit lower on these rankings, he seems like he is good for team morale he's keeping people together and you know when people are faced with a vote especially later in the pre-merge portion of the game they're going to go to who they feel comfortable with they're going to want to vote with the people that they just generally like the most and charlie just seems like a really likable person who's put himself in a great position with maria so i do believe they'll make that decision together granted crazy stuff can happen but i believe that maria and charlie are you know leagues you know more safe than the folks that are on the CG tribe um as well and then my number six spot is Liz. I love that Drew put Liz as high as he did. I wanted to put Liz higher than I had her at six. But I think, you know, echoing everything that Drew said, Liz is in a fantastic position on this tribe, especially for somebody who the edit has gone out of their way to show Liz being quirky, mentioning the money, you know, rich people just like us, you know, she's doing her thing. But she's a number on this tribe that doesn't get along. And Liz isn't in the bubble of folks that aren't getting along with each other, right? You know, Venus is throwing out Hunter and and Tiff and I'm sorry, not Tiff. Um what's my thing? Tevin, I'm sorry. Tevin and Venus have had a conversation that was shown in a secret scene. Soda and Venus have had their whole idol snatching. You know, there's a lot going on there that really Liz is so much more beneficial because Liz is a number. They're going to go to a tribal council with five people. Liz is a vote that you need to get somebody out. Um and I think that she gets easily very, you know, she gets pulled quick. So I'm going for Liz for my number six. Yeah, so for my number six, I am, uh, you know, catching back up to you a little bit. Somebody you had earlier, uh, Brandon, but my number six is Hunter. Um, again, on paper, I think Hunter has like so many of the excellent qualities that would make like a Tommy Sheehan type uh, winner. Um, the question is, was he given the right tribe to do that? I think that, again, Orange, I think it's going to be a total like Luvu style meltdown. Um, although, you know, maybe Luvu didn't. There's, there, I'm sure there are another tribe you could pick uh, that would better exemplify that. But for this episode, at least, I struggle to see him go. Um, let's say Venus, you know, she's she's demonstrated some dislike for him, which is odd because it feels like Sudeja and Kevin are, uh, Tevin, not Kevin, are a little bit icier to her. But, you know, she she's pushed towards him. And I kind of wonder, like, where would the numbers possibly come from, you know, to go after him? Like, even if even if she hates the guy, is, is it really going to get moving? I don't think so. So for that reason, I think Hunter is a pretty safe six. Um, there are a lot. Of, it's kind of an interesting. I don't know if you feel the same way, Brandon. It's kind of an or Gordon. It's kind of an interesting season because there are really a, a lot of people I cannot imagine going. Like there, there's like a, a clear like eight that are that are you know going to the merge, and then there's kind of like this undergroup that you know they seem a little bit more expendable. Uh, but Hunter is within that 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 top echelon. And so is my number seven, which is Ben. Um, ben and Charlie obviously have a bond. Um, the Metallica thing, I honestly thought it was stupid, totally unnecessary. Uh, but why would you include that if they're not going to work together? You know, that would be ridiculous. It would be ridiculous. So clearly, they, clearly, there's got to be some love. There's got to be something in the water. And 
Charlie's going to cue in his, uh, his his close ally. Maybe not number one. Maybe Maria is number one, but going to cue him in if, if, if they make a move. So for that reason, Ben is a safe seven. Um, he's a funny dude. I like him a lot. I like the personality. Um, I do think that when the merge happens, I need to see a little bit, a little bit more substance. You know, he's got a lot of catchphrases. He, you know, he's snappy, he's witty. Um, and, but I, I do think there are some questions about like game aptitude. Um, and really if he's going to get the credit over Charlie or, you know, over his allies, um, on the green tribe, if, if it comes time to make a move. Drew, I love how you make it sound like there are players in the game that have like plot armor uh, based on how they're being portrayed. That maybe they this, maybe they need like a Drew Barrymore and Scream kind of a moment where somebody that it seems like is going to the season is going to revolve around just because it's like axed first. Maybe that's the move. Hey, it would it would be good for your team, wouldn't it, Gordon? But right now, I I'm a literature major. I study lit, and I'm very confident in my grasp of narratives. And I think that you could read the narrative and and save away a number of people. That DoorDash is going to be so sweet. Yeah, this, like, where, where, where near me, I was just saying there's no Cajun food near me. Where near me has lobster and, uh, you know, good steak. Yeah, pig Gordon. Go, like get a, yeah, go, get a, go get a filet mignon. <laughs> Ooh, uh, is, did, I, I, I was wondering if Drew was going to show up or if Basile was going to show up. But uh, the, with the level of smack talk, I feel like I'm talking to Basile here. Listen, Gordon, you know, I, I'll tell you, I've been traveling all day. I just got in. I'm, I'm exhausted. So... It's not Basile. In fact, I just, my judgment is tanked out on me. Like I'm making wild calls. I'm reorganizing the power ranking. Uh, it was going to give you, you know, a high volatility. Maybe you'll close the gap, Gordon, because you need a win. I'm telling you. I'm not above it. All stars are like, like a JV team. So I'm not I'm, above I'm, it. I'm hoping people will come in. For you. I'm not, I'm not above it because uh, when uh, in the first episode, when Austin originally uh, had the correct pick in the last spot and to, to like, just because he wanted to like make it interesting, swapped it up. And part of me was like, no, 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 you do what you want to do. But then I was like, we might need this. So I'm any advantage you're willing to give us, I'm willing yeah. to take. I don't want to speak for the call, but nobody needs a win here more than your boy. So I just like, <laughs> if we can just clinch this and we get one in for me, I'll take it. That, that's, win one for Brandon, please. That's what we need. Am I up? I think I'm seven. You're up. Yeah, I think you are. Seventh Tevin, that hit 90 show that we all love. Oh. My seventh person is is Tevin. I love Tevin. I love watching Tevin. The And I would have had Tevin higher but what makes me so nervous is the preview for next episode that tevin and soda are plotting against each other and granted i agree with drew i don't think that tevin is going to go but soda is another person provided soda doesn't go another person that tevin is going to have beef with in addition to venus which we've already seen happen you know so in a merge situation in a mergatory situation they all get there having two people on your tribe that already aren't the biggest fan of you not ideal, like not great for Tevin's long-term chances. I do agree with the narration. I expect Tevin to be a huge character in the season. I just, I'm unsure of the journey, how we're going to get there. If Tevin has bad blood with multiple people on the tribe, don't love it. Um, but love him. I think he's great. And then my number eight is Ben. Um, I love Ben. I, I, that does not rock made me audibly laugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you have to do this. It's like you're contractually obligated. The thing that makes me nervous about Ben is provided Sega does go to a tribal council. You know, Ben has been in the secret scenes, and I believe they may have showed it on the actual show. You know, he's been nervous to throw out a name. He talked to Tim about Jem, but just to everybody else, he's been kind of middling and saying, I don't want to throw out a name yet. With the pressure of a tribal council after a Sega loss, I do worry for Ben. I worry for Ben's anxiety level. You know, Ben is voiced being an anxious person, being there, having been an anxious person. I know what that can kind of do to you. I do worry for Ben and doing something volatile, maybe saying too much, like, you know, some are doing right now, You're like, doing something where you get yourself in a position um, that isn't good for long term. I don't think Ben would go, but I can see Ben being potentially left out of a move. Um, so I do. I'm not worried for his chances surviving the episode. I am just worried about his chances surviving after this one, provided Sega goes to travel council. Yeah, he might face a real problem that everybody's going to know who he voted for, because there's no way he can resist not using the kiss font. Uh, he, there's no way he, or, or lightning bolts or something like that. There's no possible yeah. way. So he, that's something he's got to keep an eye on. You know, his, his elementary school notebooks are filled with that S, S you know, that yeah. S that, yeah, he's doing oh, the, the S, S like oh, crazy. Yeah. You know, he's going to only vote for people with an S but in their S, name. Yeah. So I Charlie yeah, I, safe. 
I mean, Brandon, your points about Tevin are really interesting because, I mean, Gordon, you were kind of talking about like, oh, maybe there'll be a surprise. You'll you'll get like the shock boot like like Kelly. And I think Tevin really could be that candidate because he's obviously someone who's been foregrounded, foregrounded. You know, he's very compelling. He's a great speaker, um, but he has beef with so many people. And I was struck by a moment. And I think maybe it was a secret scene. But where he, Venus is coming to him for help, and maybe this aired, and she's like, "Like, please, you gotta like, you gotta give me something." And he was like, "We'll talk," but like, Tevin needed a moment. Tevin, we'll talk when Tevin's ready. And I was like, "Dude, come on, bro! Like, you guys haven't even been to tribal council, and you're pulling this stuff out. That's like double idol, ensconced majority way to way to deal with a minority number." Uh, and so for that reason, I think that. Um, some of his confidence might be a little premature, and I could I, I could really see him getting sniped early March. Um, but my eight, my eight is someone else. Uh, and my eight again, right? Because you just did eight, Brandon. I did. I just did eight. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So my eight, uh, my favorite player this season, uh, in my opinion, what Survivor needs going forward is Q, because he is extremely well spoken. When he made that pitch to Tiffany. It wasn't using the, the jargon, the game by jargon. It was just completely logical, 100% from the heart. He's a highly reactive player. Is that the best gameplay? No. Is it entertaining? Does it make interesting game states? Absolutely. So I am rooting for Q. But when I look at that um, Yanu tribe dynamic, I say this is a tribe that um, people with, with a losing mentality, right? I don't know if I buy that Q was just testing them. I think that he had sat in the rain for two days and he, you know, he was okay not being there. They're, they got a losing mentality. They're going to lose the next challenge. I put money on it. Um, and I think that when that happens, or if that happens, uh, Kenzie and Q are going to suss out that that Bonnie was not there, right? It's do they take a shot within the three tribe members or do they defer that decision? Um, and, you know, that could mean that he's a prospect. That could mean that Tiffany's got to gotta choose. So for that reason i think that he's not as safe as brandon had him but i do think he's making it through this episode okay my ninth i forget the order so for me this is the point where people start to get a little bit vulnerable um and it's tim in my mind if charlie and maria side with the girls they're not going to take out ben they're going to take out tim who is a big personality really we haven't seen much of him like jiving with the with the group um, and that kind of reminds me of the edit that Sifu got, where also a huge personality, like minimal group involvement, mostly like plot based, not really character moments, um, which is kind of odd for a big personality. And so for that reason, I think that uh, if things go super sideways on green, Tim's going to be the casualty. But do I think that's going to happen? No. And that's why he's my number nine as opposed to 15. This is like Drew and I did our notes next to each other. This is crazy how how aligned this is. I have Tim a little bit later, but that's that's my assessment on Tim. Once we get there, um, my nine is Jem. I have Jem a little bit higher. Um, Jem, you know, we just saw her find that beware advantage. You know, hopefully in this episode or if they have to go to tribal council, she finds this idol and she can recover with her boat. And I do think that idol again. You know, I understand and I agree with Drew's assessment on these advantages, but her idol may turn into a barter, bartering chip if her name is on the chopping block once they're about to leave for tribal council. Right now, we kind of know it's not going to be Maria or Charlie. I have a feeling it's probably not Ben, but the other three could be any of them. It could be Mariah, it could be Tim, it could be Jem. If Jem has an idol, it's much better for Jem to have that tangible thing to either threaten and say, I can play this, or whip it out if she's the person who's going. So I feel good about Jem and her chances. I also think, not for anything, and I get closer because I feel like we're whispering, Jem had a really good winner confessional in the first episode Ooh, is I, I forget i forget what the wording was but it's right when they go to the first commercial break she is like the bumper that takes you out to commercial i believe d also had the bumper that took you to commercial I, I, she it was a very similar kind of and i believe she says in the confession like gems the winner like it, it felt very good and it just it felt like weirdly out of place with gems current edit also like i'm waiting to get more gem is the winner and i don't have that but i love the confessional and i think it's really good so i have gem at nine you know i hope there's plenty more winner confessionals in gems feature at 10 and i want to echo also what drew said about this is when i start to get nervous gem was my last like i'm a little nervous everybody under here you know could go in either way i have soda as my number 10 and again this preview of tevin and soda makes me nervous if they go to a tribal council, if Nami goes to a tribal council, you, I don't want to use 
easy vote to describe any of these people, because I do believe any of the five people that are on NAMI do have something about them that can translate into the later game that's necessary, right? But I do think that, you know, after these past three episodes, you would think that Venus would be the convenient vote to go with in a premier tribal council. But if Tevin has an issue with somebody, Tevin has two numbers. Tevin has Hunter for sure. And then Liz will go with the numbers. Liz is good at Survivor. Liz is, Liz is very, I think, good at what she's doing. And Liz will go where the numbers go. So that leaves Soda and Venus, you know, and it probably, again, won't be Soda. I would assume it'll be Venus. Venus is much lower on my ranking here because I would bank on it being her. But in the event that this is a fight that Tevin or Soda can't come back from, Soda might be the one who's going in this next episode. So this is when I'm a little bit, I'm a little nervous. Soda is my 10 um, and we'll see what happens. Well, as, as a quick aside, if you watch uh, the Gordon Holmes exit press, and you absolutely should, uh, Randon was pretty convinced that if uh, if his tribe went to tribal council, that he was going to be able to talk people to getting rid of soda uh, with or without his vote, with or without his idols. So uh, wow. that to me leads that there might that that her name has been out there and there are some people who who might not be on board with it, but are open to it. So that was that was a surprise for me to hear. Well, that I didn't listen surprise. to any of Randon's exit press, but that's super that's super interesting. What I did not know that. Uh, but how are you spending your Thursday evenings, Brandon? It, um, Deal or No Deal Island. This is an uh, advertisement. <laughs> this is a paid Dondi advertisement. It's a great program. No, I'm kidding. I definitely, yeah, I've been, I, I just, for whatever reason, I missed that yesterday. But I will, um, you know, every week after that. I listened to yours with me. That was great. Oh, oh, you listened to an interview <laughs> with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. <laughs> all, you know. all right. It's my ASMR. I listen to it before I go to sleep. Anyway, Drew. I will say every Survivor player goes through and listens to all their exit interviews. And additionally, they all tune into this power ranking. I would, I, I we would have YouTube notifications to power ranking. You see what everybody said about us. So season 46 cast, I'm sorry I trashed you. You know, tough, tough. You'll have to, you'll have to take it in stride. Uh, but my number 10, another person who I'm very down on, um, actually more down on than, than her ranking. Although you have to account for the idol, which is Jem. Uh, I think Jem is in serious trouble. Um, and it was trouble that the edit kind of went out of its way to disguise, which could point to your theory, Brandon, but Jem found that idol basically on day one or day two, whenever it was. So not only then did she do a bad job of reburying the box and get caught, but it's been days of not telling anybody. So now she's in a position where she can't tell anyone about the idol to build trust because it's been too long. They all know it's been sitting around for at least a while. Um, and that's bad. That's really bad for her. Um, so I, I think that could rebound against her because if I was that tribe, if I was the secret tribe, I would pick that pick that box right up and set it in the middle of camp so that nobody can get to it without seeing. I mean, make it a birdcage situation, honestly, especially if you don't have the item. So I think that things are going to get a little tricky for Jem. And I think the fact that she didn't like make sure it was it hidden better um, could bode ill for her strategic sense in this game. Um, and so for that reason, I think that she's a vulnerable number. Uh, my number 11 is Kenzie. Um, whoa, talk about like coming in hot. Kenzie is like a, an asteroid, like entering the atmosphere because she is on like day seven, whatever day it is. I don't even know. I just caught up yesterday. Uh, day seven. Every tribe knows that she's the quote unquote mastermind. Now, how credible is Banu? Open question. Maybe they don't believe him, but. She's been playing way too hard. And I, I have to tell you, I wasn't a fan of the way she handled her interaction with Banu. I really liked the way that Q handled it. I mean, she spoke to Banu, obviously giving him nothing. He knew that. Um, don't When you go on Survivor, don't be like, you got to come to me with a plan first, and then we can work from that. That's basically like, I don't want to work with you. I'll do it only if it's absolutely necessary and convenient. Don't do that. Say something else. Um, and so I think that that, that heat combined with... Um, not really managing Q and Bana very well could come to bite her. Uh, at this point, they're, they know a merch is coming. And Bana is going to spill, it sounds like, from next time on Survivor, that he told everybody everything, including that Kenzie is a huge, massive threat. Um, so do does this underdog tribe with no numbers really want to go into the merge with prior, target priority number one? Open question. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd want that out of there. For that reason, Kenzie's my number 11. Love it. I can't wait to talk about Kenzie when I get to Kenzie, which is going to be, again, spoiler alert, a couple more spots. Um, for my 11, I have Mariah. Now, Mariah has had a very quiet, just like Tim, who's who's here as well, you know, has had a quiet couple of episodes. But what I take from Mariah's game is she has a confessional 
episode one talking about how she finds it difficult to connect with people. She's doing Survivor just to get out of her shell a little bit. And when you watch the Sega scenes with Mariah, she's doing exactly that. She is a fundamental part of their tribe dynamic. She's having fun. You know, when Ben and Charlie were doing their 28 long, 28 minute long montage of the Taylor Swift versus Metallica, Mo is in the middle of it, you know, making jokes like, you know, Ben says, is I'm sorry, Charlie says, is the all too well 10 minute version different? And then she's like sustained. Like she like she's in it and she's joking. She's having fun. And I really do like that for her. And I think that the same thing with Charlie in a situation where they do go to a tribal council, you do want to keep keep the people that you just like the most, that you vibe with the most, you know, especially in the early game when you're doing a vote out of convenience. You know, I think Mo is doing exactly what she set out to do, which was just connect and be in with a group of people. Um, I can see her just like Liz on Nami being pulled in just to be a number for whatever plan happens to go down there. You know, she is again, getting a quiet edit. We, you know, some people get quiet edits and they're there for a long time. Some are not, you know, we don't know, but we're hoping that, you know, Mo, you know, kind of gets pulled into something. And then we have, you know, she gets 15 episodes, you know, confessionals next episode. Banu broke the record for episode three confessionals. Wow. Yeah. yeah he, I believe he got <laughs> a lot of miracles happening. I believe he got 13 or 15 in episode three, which is the most that anybody yeah. has had in episode three. Crazy. And, well, and, and, an any episode ever or just an, a third episode? Just the third episode, episode, I believe. Oh, yeah. Shout out that, to Survivor Fact Checker. That, it was 75% him, you know, asking <laughs> for a million smiles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, we're also, whoever wins the season of the power rankings, we don't have Survivor's budget, so we're going to get like 47 smiles, uh, which is it's still a decent amount of smiles. Yeah. Uh, it's not a million, so we don't Do have the kind Smiles of convert yeah. to hearts. Like, what is the, the you know, currency, you know, exchange yeah, rate? we got to work on that. Yeah, we're going to figure that out. Um, and in my 12 spot, I have Tim, who um, Drew has already previously talked about. I do agree that if they if if Sega does go to tribal council this next episode, I do believe it will probably be Tim. Tim seems like the vote of convenience. He isn't seen connecting with a ton of people. There is a secret scene where he's trying to strategize with Jem and Mo and Ben, and he's not really getting a ton. Um, you know, the girls are not giving him what he wants, and he is being very forthright with wanting to strategize, which isn't necessarily a good sign. Like, it, it, do, it doesn't look good. Um, so yeah. I do think that, you know, you have this Charlie and Maria. I do believe they will likely grab the women on their tribe and then maybe leave Ben out, maybe pull Ben in. Ben obviously doesn't have a vote, so Ben's vote doesn't matter in the first place. And then Tim will be the boot. I hope not, I hope differently for Tim. I hope they keep winning. Tim was my winner pick. Tim, I told every you know person that asked me preseason who my winner pick was, I wrote hard for Tim. I hope he can recover. I'll look like a genius if he does. Um, who's to say that he will or will not? So TBD on Tim. Dude. I got to start watching these secret scenes, man. Like the only one I saw was the Tevin one on Twitter. Cause that's vital information. I didn't know that. I, I, I thought Tim, I thought they were going to side with Tim over the, over the ladies. So I, I'm, I'm sweating here. Yeah. I uh, believe that was a secret scene. I don't think was that this week or last. I believe it was this week. I believe it just was this past episode. What's crazy. And I love the 90 minute episodes, you know, all survivors, good survivor. Um, they are leaving out secret scenes that should be in the episode. Like the, oh, the yeah. Tevin and Venus, argument that was in episode two a secret scene there's no reason that shouldn't be in there like that that that's that's vital information for us yeah. as the viewers to know when we're doing this like this is it's convenient you know to have in the episode well i do um, know when they when they do the editing process i know they're thinking like what are the power rankers gonna <laughs> think of this i know that's top and pro probes of mine he always tells me that so that that's a they, they dropped the ball on that one i'll, I'll let them know yes. i'm frustrated but again oh, we got the long montage which is great that's what that's what drew wanted was the metallica thing yeah, um, I was so hyped for that and cut every scene for the Metallica montage. Love, love Metallica. Love Taylor Swift even more. There's some T Swift CBS cabal going on. She's everywhere on T on, on CBS all of a sudden. They're using her music. Well, I, said I, this I think that could have had something on to the do Super with Bowl. Things. How on earth the Super Bowl did they not have a Survivor ad with Charlie listing 108 Taylor Swift songs from memory from Fiji? Drop missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Well, the, sadly, the, the the strikes are over. So CBS's budget is no longer just like Survivor Advertising Central. There's no there's no, more, no Empire State Building. <laughs> no more buffs on the landmarks. Yeah. The, the <laughs> I love that. that will never love happen that. again. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, forty five was was nice because it seemed like like the the production they promoted it. You know, they felt like they found some new love for the show. Yeah. Um, and these 90 minute episodes are not quite hitting the same way on 46. I don't know if you guys feel differently. I felt like that episode two was long, was too long. I guess it was two hours to right. 90 minutes, but uh, that did play into things. And someone I'd like to see a little bit more of with this extra time is my number 12, uh, right? Because that's what we just did. 
Yes. Um, please stop me if I'm wrong. Number number 12 is Sudasia. So I think that Sudasia is kind of rubbing her tribe the wrong way. Uh, Tevin is going against her. And if Tevin's going against her, who's with her? You're right. Hunter was annoyed by the seeing. She blew Venus off uh, in a very bad instance of gameplay. Um, and Liz, I mean, is Liz going to lay down on the line for Sedacia? I doubt it. Um, and additionally, she's not n- necessary for the challenges. So I think for all those reasons, um, Sedacia is a is a high likelihood boot either now or in the near future. I struggle to believe that um, she's going to have people to back her if like things swing her way. Um, so again, she's in she's in the kind of this like bubble zone of people that I just can't imagine do that well, make it that far. And I also, you got to ask yourself, would, would the show be using her the way that they are if if she was the killer, right? I mean, they love that kind of archetype. They love somebody who's quirky, but but comes into their own and, and stands out and doesn't compromise. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my 13, though, is who I think will ultimately end up going uh, from the Nobby tribe if they go to tribal. Um, and that's Venus. Um, because... With Ramden gone, with no idol, right, or no idol clue, whatever it might be, she's really drawing dead. Like, the, the only thing that's going to save her is if somebody has a complete meltdown and, like, they just forget about her. Like, she's been on the bottom so long that maybe now they start to, like, look over her. You know, she's so down down beneath that they, they're overlooking. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm I not sure I think that that tribe is going to lose the next challenge, although they've had a major challenge competitor taken out. Um, but I do think Venus is like, if she doesn't go pre-merge, she really is like prime earn the merge boot, right? Because nobody will bat for her. She's not really the strongest in the challenges. Uh, so suffice it to say, I don't think her days are, I think her days are numbered. Love it. Love it. We're going to get into, again, very, very, very mirrored thoughts here. I have my number 13 as Kenzie. And I, I think that Kenzie, you know, Kenzie benefits so well on a tribe that isn't losing. Like if Kenzie is on a different tribe, she's chilling and she's booking it with her group. You know, she is somebody in a Reba 4 situation. They find that group and they're booking it to the end. She hasn't had that luxury with Yanu. She, she does. She, they have lost a couple of times and every time they lose, she sticks out more and more. And, and the, you know, the curtain is being pulled back and she, her face is getting, you know, an inch, an inch, an inch, an inch. And that worries me, you know, they are going to probably vote out Bondu in this tribal council that we all are assuming they're very much going to, which is very funny. What? But if they don't, if 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 they, you know, if Banu does something, if a, another miracle happens, if six more happen, who knows? Kenzie is the decoy surprise boot. Kenzie has a beautiful pre-merge arc, the, like like of J.D. Robinson, of just somebody who is in it and very involved in it and then just isn't. And I, I really like the storytelling perspective of somebody who comes in, comes in hot, like Drew said, and then kind of burns out, especially when you have a decoy like Banu who's there, who, again, probably is leaving. But in the event that he doesn't, I don't see a scenario at all where it's Q or Tiff. It will be, you know, Banu or Kenzie. Banu's going to pitch Kenzie, I would assume. And then we'll see what happens. But I do think Kenzie's in a tight spot here. And if I'm calling my shot, because that'd be pretty impressive. Um, Again, not enough to put him to put Kenzie 15th because 15th is, you know, um, we'll get to that. 14th, however, is Venus. Um, Unfortunately, when I do talk about that vote of convenience, you know, as Drew said, Venus has been on the bottom for quite some time. But Venus's saving grace is whatever is going on with Tevin and Soda. Like that, that, that is the perfect vehicle for Venus to be like, hey, I know we've had a rough couple of days, but let's, you know. And I, from what we've seen, it doesn't seem like Venus had ever mentioned Hunter's name to anybody but Randon. Randon heard that Randon's gone. So we have to just see, you know, she can swallow that and forget it. And then just like, hey, you know, Soda, Soda took the, you guys, you saw it twice that happened. You know, Soda took the idol. That's the perfect vehicle for her to get back in. And, you know, from what I understand about gro- groups who do go to a pre-merge tribal before a mergatory situation is you do get to solidify those bonds. You feel it's like you go through a traumatic event together. You do feel stronger. And if Venus is in a group that will do that, like Venus was part of it. You can't take Venus's vote out of the situation. Like Venus came up with the plan and was instrumental in it. And they do have that trust locked in. Um, so I think Venus could have a saving grace here. Um, but who knows, you know, if they lose, I don't, I don't think it looks great. Um, but it could, you know, it could happen. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I, there was a moment with, uh, Ramden where Venus was like, Hunter's a big threat. Don't you, I mean, do you agree? 
And he was like, well, I haven't seen that. Um, can you walk me through your logic? And she's like, well, I have eyes, so it's obvious. I was like, oh, dear God. Like, wait you're only minute. ally. You have, wait a minute. You have eyes? Oh, I'm in. I know. There, I'm see, there's You can't so spell like... Survivor without two. One eye? Two eyes? I'm sorry. Keep going. I think there's only one. Cut <laughs> uh... <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> <laughs> that's don't include that statement well anyways uh you know there is an eye in immunity so maybe it'll maybe it'll work out for venus but uh, then some some sloppy play to that would indicate to me that maybe like you know there's a big mouth which is gonna is gonna you know occlude this kind of playing under the radar kind of like pulling the strings type gameplay which which would be urgently required um, in that situation uh so my 14 is somebody who i'm not happy putting at 14 but i've kind of been forced to do it um, which is Mariah, because I personally believe things are going to go against the girls on that tribe. Um, and if they do, Jem has this idol. So it's like, who's going to land on, you know? And I can't imagine Jem doesn't tell uh, Maria about the idol uh, if push comes to shove. Like, like if the box is a big issue and she needs help getting the getting the the, the, the advantage and the token or whatever, whatever it's going to be um i look at mariah and i see someone who has no momentum in the edit who's like got their emotional moment at the very beginning of the game just to like set tone and then it's kind of disappeared and i feel like this the end of the pre-merge is like this weird spot where you know you have to devote a lot of storytelling time to these early boots right because they're the they're the, the story as the season's getting rolling and then the merge is coming up and that's going to be the narrative for the rest of the season but this pre-merge is like you know what do you do Right? Do we are we really gonna build up like a big person like Brando? God rest his soul. He kind of got like under Brando. Is Brando, is Brando okay? Bit. Yeah, he just got voted off. Oh, okay, so, yeah. and similarly, I think uh, I think things do not look good from that edit perspective for Mariah. Uh, my fifteen, though, I think you know you could have you could have put everyone else in any other order. My fifteen is Banu. Banu is not getting another miracle. I I I think that Banu has exhibited some of the worst survivor play uh we've seen maybe ever. And I don't want to rag on the guy because he's been going through it. He's had um he's kind of been ostracized. I feel like they've been a little cruel to him, honestly, on that tribe. But he's done himself no favors. Um like he had the opportunity to get the get the solve the puzzle, couldn't do it, just folded under pressure. I mean, he, he stopped even attempting it, right? That to me is not the kind of like, like between the rock and the hard place, momentum, adrenaline that you need to pull through in this situation. Um, I don't think Tiffany is going to uh, want to lose either of her numbers. I think if Tiffany won't compromise, you know, that's a deadlock on that tribe. So I think Banu is going home. Uh, I've, I've wagered at this point quite a bit of money, my dignity on it. So I'm hopefully hoping that's right. But I think that uh, Banu is toast. I could DoorDash toast. <laughs> you had my fucking joke. I'm so mad about the joke. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not looking good. And I just want to say, as somebody who like didn't live Banu's experience, but lived a short, rough experience on the island. You know, if you are watching this, you are a friend of Gordon, a friend of mine, a friend of Drew's, you know, please, you know, send Banu all the love if this is his last week, because it is a rough situation, you know, and getting out, early no matter like Jelinski also jazz also like you, you know the people the, the people who watch the show are not kind you know especially having a you know you have a guy like i'm a guy who cried a lot on the program not as much as bonu but i did I, I cried quite a bit um and it does you know i have no shame in that neither does bonu i'm sure of it but the people on the internet are not kind so if this is bonu's week i request all of you who are watching this please just send him all the love he would very much appreciate it i'm sure um that being said it doesn't look good I don't see a scenario that he he comes from it, you know, but crazier things in Survivor have happened. And what a whirlwind it would be if it did. You know, what a what a crazy editing thing it would be if if Bonnie <laughs> was saved and Bonnie, you know, goes further again. Like I, 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 what would you say? Emily Flippin, you know, it, Emily ha- it just happened last season. Emily Flippin. Is possible. Um, it's Bonnie Flippin. Um, who knows? Um, but I just again, as somebody who has lived not the same experience, but just in a, you know, in a bubble, a similar experience. Um, it sucks to see somebody just have so much difficulty at, at, at every turn, you know, like I, I skew in my personal experience, I believe cl- a little bit closer to Jelinski where it's kind of like funny. Banu is like kind of left where it's been funny. And now it just feels like, you know, I really, again, this is just a edit, you know, 
thing from this past episode. I loved seeing a human moment from both Ben and Liz when they encounter Banu on the journey. And, you know, Liz has been portrayed as this like kooky, you know, funny. I have a lot of money, whatever. But Liz is it was a very human, tender, sweet moment, which is like why I love Survivor. Like that, that's the kind of stuff that I love. And then Ben, too, with it, that does not rock. You know, you have character insights to both these people who you wouldn't have had had Banu not been in the state that he was. So I, I love it for the storytelling perspective. But I do think that this is Banu's last uh, last hurrah here. I will say that journey when he's like, I want to win a million hearts. They cut to Liz and it felt it looked like she was stifling a laugh, dude. Like, oh, did like, it? And it, it did. And it looked like they wanted you to notice that because like, why well, cut to her making a face, you know? Yeah. So they did. I don't know what they did do, which, you know, again, this is a Banu thing, but they did air Banu saying, I want to win a million hearts like multiple times. I believe it was two. It could have been three, but they show him saying that a couple times, which isn't isn't great for longevity chances, no, you know, but you know what? Not for anything. There are a lot of people who are watching Banu who do, you know, they resonate with him. They love him, you know, and he's, if he wants a million hearts, he's got, he's almost there. Yeah. He's, 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 you know, and he's got three more right here. So, yeah. you know, good luck to him. Um, I don't see it being a long journey, but when we're on season 56, which is pre-mergers versus, you know, geriatrics or whatever they do, I will align with him. We're going to have a great thing. Um, We're going to, we're going to go to the sanctuary where good things happen. I think so. TBD. There's going to be a, a box puzzle at the top of a ladder, and you both are going to be like, well, I'm going to Jelinski that one. I'm like, nah, nah no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two game changers, Jelinski. You just don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. Nobody's ever figured that out. You need to just quit the challenge. You know? I've been saying that, brother. Challenge. I almost then, was like, this is, you know. <laughs> you pulled through. I saw it. Um, you did. You were there. And, and then um, and then Banu, first ever strategy, divine smiting. He smited yeah. his competition through the power of prayer. You know, he can do it once, he can do it again. I mean, so these tribes yeah. should be nervous. What, ha but... you know, what happens if he's on the bottom again and 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 like somebody mysteriously wakes up with another injury? Do, like, does, when does production step in? Is this like, was it the Twilight Zone where the kid could just like wish things to happen? Maybe Bono is like, is, is manifesting these injuries and, and one by one he's going to start taking people out. So that's something to keep an eye on. Maybe it's the it's the be kind shirt. Maybe that like wields power. Like if that's left behind and then Q wears it and then all the numbers go his way, could be something. Yeah. We got to find it. Put it in the Smithsonian. It could be like the opposite though. I mean, nobody's been very kind to him. You know, they, they carry on the shirt. It's like a, you know, it's a curse. It's like a monkey's paw. Yeah. All right. The picks are in. They are locked in. They cannot be changed. The rules are extremely strict in that manner right down here. Uh, so we had one lock. Uh, I, I imagine everybody's going to have this lock. It's spot 15, Banu, unless, you know, like you said, unless another player uh, meets with an unfortunate injury, uh, it might be rough for him to to, to get out uh, get out of it once again. Uh, only the biggest disparity, uh, Q. Uh, Brandon had Q in spot three. Drew had him in spot eight. So uh, if Q goes home, Brandon, you and I are going to have a real problem. Uh, you and I are going to have a real issue, buddy. I have uh, enough issues, brother. Let's oh, just, yeah. let's just uh, reallocate the issues. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna brand new one. Uh, so uh, if you if you enjoy this content, and if uh, again if you sat through 50 minutes of this, you might. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. It does us a huge favor. Um, any Drew, Brandon, anything you want to promote? What's going on in your lives? Well, I'm watching the Bear season two right now, which is super good. Um, I don't know if you've watched the Bear season one. Um, or you just watch this show, which this show is great. But you can also power rank the bear if you want to watch that. If you're watching the bear season two, message me. It's really good. Like I'm really into it. I want to watch. It was just happening right here before I got here. Yeah, we get compared to the bear like all the time, like almost the same show. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I get it. I, I get it. Love it. All right. So uh, Drew, Brandon, like I, I, I get so much from this. I enjoy the strategy talk, and to hear it from people who've been there and lived it is just fascinating to me and you and you did such a fantastic job so i want to thank you both uh, for being here and participating in this madness uh so until next time uh for drew for brandon for myself uh thank you for joining us and i hope you join us next week for even more of the survivor 46 power rankings love it